So we're going to talk about uh, re uh, reacted ureas. Oh, I'm sorry, not reacted ureas. Uh, stabilized nitrogen sources. And before we get there, I want to make sure that everybody kind of understands the basics. Okay, there's a lot of um, information here that is is uh, flawed. There's a lot of there's several red herrings in this one. They're trying to distract you away from the actual reason why you'd want to apply it. But they do explain it, what happens, and more or less how the uh, 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 stabilized nitrogen sources function. What's the intent behind it? And there's quite a bit of evidence to support some of it and very little evidence to support the other parts of it. And I'll explain that, but I'm going to go through, it's only three minutes long. I would like to play the whole thing just to make sure everybody understands for the next several episodes, we're going to be, what, what we're going to be talking about. Okay. Stabilized nitrogen sources. Urea has been a nitrogen source in fertilizers for decades. To optimize its performance and minimize potential losses to the environment, the need to responsibly manage its use is essential. To get this done, let's first take a look at some of the challenges that need to be overcome. Non-amended urea begins to break down and release nitrogen as soon as it comes into contact with moisture in the soil environment. If it is not watered in soon after application, some of the nitrogen will be lost to the atmosphere through volatilization. Nitrogen not lost to volatilization moves into the soil as ammonium. Below the soil surface, microbial activity converts ammonium into nitrate. Since nitrate is negatively charged, it doesn't bond with the soil. So with irrigation or rainfall events, it can leach out of the root zone along with the water. Under wet conditions, soil bacteria can convert nitrate into several nitrogenous gases, and the nitrogen is lost to the atmosphere. One way to reduce these losses is to amend urea with inhibitors. This creates an enhanced efficiency fertilizer, or EEF, that stabilizes nitrogen, which provides solutions to manage these challenges. The most effective way to do this is with dual inhibitors that work both on and below the soil surface. On the soil surface, a nitrogen source with a urease inhibitor, such as NBPT, limits the process of volatilization, which is the conversion of urea to ammonia gas. Even if irrigation or rainfall is delayed, more of the nitrogen has time to make its way into the soil, reducing the potential for loss. Adding a nitrification inhibitor such as DCD, slows the conversion of ammonium to nitrate below the soil surface. This extends the time nitrogen is available in the ammonium form, so more can be taken up and used by the turf grass. This helps to minimize denitrification and leaching. EEFs that incorporate dual instead of single inhibitors are proven to be the most effective in allowing time for nutrients to move into the root zone and stay there longer. They also provide these unique advantages, readily available for quick greenup and a turf grass response of up to 12 weeks depend so just so we're clear here is that um what they're saying is mostly accurate in terms of the mechanism of what this is doing this is from allied nutrients by the way they're what her youtube channel so the you uh, i'll explain a little bit for the ones going in but he says 12 weeks of extended release this is sort of the um I don't know, I can't remember the name of this flaw, but they're saying this product will last because they have this nitrification and, and urease inhibitor, denitrification and urease inhibitor in there, the response will last for up to 12 weeks. That's not accurate. The response will last for up to 12 weeks without it. In other words, it's not lasting 12 weeks because it's in there, because these additives are in there. It's lasting 12 weeks because urea will last, the turf grass response to urea will last 12 weeks. And that, that study I did a couple, uh, last week or whatever I showed, where I'm applying urea at one pound and two pounds, and I'm waiting for four months, to, then I applied it again, and waited for four months, and applied it again, waited for four months. So I have a four month gap, 120 day gap between, so a 16 week gap, basically between applications and the nitrogen didn't the nitrogen from your the turf response from your didn't last the entire 16 weeks but it lasted a very long time and it was equivalent to all the other nitrogen sources so i want to make sure we're clear is that this is an example of how you can be easily fooled when you go oh well, it'll last 12 weeks yeah okay i should get this product i should use uflex and umax and i should use this dcd and the mbpt i should use this because i need a 12-week release i'm not going to come back to my next client or you know i'm on a 12 week cycle, or I'm not going to come back to that fairway. I'm not going to reapply it. I'm not going to go back to the football field for, you know, three months or four months. I should, I should include this in my fertilizer. What I'm <laughs> trying to say is that it might actually result in turf grass response for 12 weeks. 
but that turf grass response is likely to occur from urea anyway. And the results from last, last week's paper showed that. And the results from all these papers that I'm going to show this week are going to show that. The response is going to be equivalent to what would occur from just straight urea anyway. There are some papers, like I said, in the late 80s and early 90s that showed a little bit of advantage in terms of uptake of in, a little bit of advantage in terms of quality of response from, from, um, from these uh, stabilized urea source, stabilized nitrogen sources. There's a little bit in there. So, you know, it, it does exist, but the majority is exactly what I just said. You're going to get that same response. Whatever you're going to get from this, you're probably going to get from urea anyway. That's the way to look at it. And it's going to cost about two times as much money from using these products compared to urea. I'm not saying you're going to get a reduction in price of your bag because you might not be pricing your bag right. You might not be getting the, the salesman to you know <laughs> understand and get the price down, but you can't have urea cost equal to or greater than these products. It's all, these products are always going to be more expensive because you're adding a component to it. And in general, it's around two times more expensive. So if your is $600 a ton, this is going to be around $1,100 or $1,200 a ton. It's not 5% more, 10% more, half, 50% more. It's usually around two times greater than urea. All right, let's finish this off and then I'll come back. Talk about simple performance across varying soil and weather conditions. Since granular stabilized nitrogen is water soluble, it is equally effective when spread dry or dissolved in a spray tank and it is compatible with most spray tank inputs. When you use stabilized nitrogen fertilizers with dual inhibitors and enhanced efficiency technology, nitrogen stays available to the plant longer, allowing for more nutrient uptake. See, that sounds, that sounds convincing. Stays available for the plant longer and allowing for more nutrient. It's, it, it, it does sound like a good story. I'll, I'll admit it does sound, that, sound good. But when we go out and we measure it, and we go out and we actually account for everything. We balance everything out. And then we see, you know, we measure what happens to the turf in terms of growth, in terms of quality, in terms of uptake, all these other things. The advantage is usually none. Usually there's no advantage at all in turf grass systems. But when there is an advantage, which is rare, the amount that you're gaining is nowhere remotely close to the additional cost that you're spending, the money that you're spending on it. It's nowhere near that. Okay. So the argument is, it could be made, just like I said last week, let's say you get another 10% uptake or 10% better quality from this product when you apply a pound of N from urea and it costs whatever it is, $2 a pound of N. Well, you, pound, you apply a pound for $2, so $2. And you get 10, let's say you get 10% better uptake or whatever, the, whatever metric you want to use. Well, urea costs 63 cents per pound or whatever, a dollar. Let's say it costs a dollar per pound of in. Just add in 10% more nitrogen from urea. So now it's a dollar and 10 cents rather than $2. That's sort of some basic fundamental understanding. It's not, it's not all there and all the information is there you need to know. But that general concept is what I'm going for here. What, what really is... The evidence indicates we should follow. This helps you get the most out of your nutrition investment while minimizing potential losses to the environment. So he said nutrition investment. That's the reason I showed this. So he's thinking they're talking about being the nutrients is an investment and it is an investment. And what I'm saying is I want something in return for my investment and I'm not going to get back anywhere remotely close back to what I spent. You know, in other words, when you look at the whole program, you're going to lose money basically by spending more of it on these sorts of programs in in the majority of cases okay you're not going to your pro, your margin is going to be reduced cuz your expenses went up using a product like this rather than just using straight urea in most cases that's not only better for the turf grass and your bottom line it's a better way to fertilize yeah no it's not <laughs> i mean you can say that but as as far as the the evidence there's not a lot of evidence to support that they're saying it's a better way to fertilize so it's better for it says a better investment. It's better for your bottom line. It's a better way to fertilize. So that's all. Those are all claims that they're making on a marketing. And what I'm asking for, how do you know it's true? Because when you look in the literature, you just don't see much to support that. 